so hooked up! No shotgun dub! We definitely brought the thunder and the lightning with that solo victory. But now it's time to rank these new items within the context of the current loot pool. And before we do that, we'll switch the current tier list around a little bit. Thunderburst is still the king. I wanted to hate on it a little bit just because it's so damn good. I wanted to try different things, but it's all Thunderburst all day, every single day. The fists have really, really been nerfed, actually. I would say that they are still peak, but they are not overpowered anymore. 100% not overpowered anymore. You can put them down at the bottom of peak, but if you're using these things wrong, they're going to get you eliminated now. They are not going to get you those easy eliminations or those easy victory royales anymore. Dance Bomb is out, so we got to put it down at the bottom. And we'll talk about the EMP right now. EMP is in, and this is a peak item, specifically because it disables the cars and it disables the turrets. They've reworked it to that so that it only does 30 damage to players, which is dramatically lower than the 80 damage it used to do. And this is also really good for collecting gold as well. It's just so multi-purpose that I have to leave it in the peak. However, with the dance bombs gone, that means the cars are not as hard countered, and so the bow rises into the peak. This thing has been dominating competitive lobbies, specifically if you get the Nitrodrome coin, which gives you infinite ammo, then people were just taking high ground and raining down hell onto anyone who was trying to fight and build in the low grounds. This thing was winning tournaments, and they did take it out of the tournaments, by the way, so you can't even use this strategy anymore, but it's still viable in pub lobbies, and like I said, no dance bombs means that everything else rises up. However, the DMR has to fall a little bit further than this, probably the least likely projectile weapon for me to take. It's kind of easy to use, but I don't feel like I'm getting my bang for my buck when I pick this thing up, especially when I could be grabbing this new tow hook, I could be grabbing a deagle, I could be grabbing this crossbow and doing better damage to cars. It's just sad that the meta hasn't really been in a space where the DMR can shine. Shockwaves have risen back up with the nerfs to the Nitro Fist. I still probably wouldn't take these over a Nitro Fist, but they are better considering the Nitro Fist take longer to recharge. The Porta Bunker remains stationary, and I'll tell you the state of the Porta Bunker right now. In competitive lobbies, people aren't even using this to base up. They're taking this specifically because it has tires on the side, and when you combine the Nitro Fist with the tires, you'll get a much more vertical jump. So people are just using this to avoid fights in Endgame. It's not even functioning as a bunker. I actually have to drop this down to trash now that I'm talking about it. Laser rifle, unfortunately, has to go down to trash as well. I was trying to support this weapon, but it's just so bloomy and it overheats so fast. There's no reason to pick this up over any other AR because you'll pretty much be doing equivalent damage to the vehicles. The tactical AR has improved significantly. It's gotten some fall off damage buffs, some damage buffs in general, kick reduction, and so it rises to the mid. And I would actually actually put it above the pistol. But we also have to consider something I didn't mention is that the Harbinger SMG got some buffs as well. One damage, fall off reduction, it got pretty much the same buffs as the tactical AR. But in build mode, Harbinger SMG is going to be a much better choice. You're going to be able to hit people through walls and you're going to be able to take walls much easier. And everything else here stays pretty much the same. I think I'll raise the Nuka-Cola a tiny bit just because I've really come to appreciate it. And I'm actually choosing it over the three big shield stack just because it does that health. And that's actually gotten me some wins. So I'd recommend going Nuka-Colas over the big shields. But in terms of these two new items, I got to put the tow hook in mid and this isn't really an insult to the tow hook it's just that it's a deagle with one round in the chamber it's very useful for knocking people off a high ground you can attach to cars with it and it's very damn accurate but it's not going to reach peak considering it's a downgraded version of an existing weapon then we have the ride the lightning movement item and i'm also gonna have to put this in the mid it's really good for the early game and fortnite has had a trend with doing this they've created movement items that are good for the beginning of the game and movement items that are good for the end of the game the simple fact is that this mythic item is very imprecise you don't get to control how many times you jump on the lightning you simply do. So if you're not paying very close attention to your direction, you can shoot yourself into storm, you can shoot yourself into a bad position and get lasered by an enemy. There's so many ways this item can fail you, and that's why it has to be in the mid. And that's also why shockwaves 
Looks like you guys made it back up to the peak. Just the precision of shockwaves cannot be understated. And that's really why the Nitro Fists are peak. It's not just that they can back up your shotgun, meaning that you can run a two weapon loadout this season, it's that they're very precise. And because of their precision and your ability to manage their cooldowns, I've gotten some very easy wins this season. My advice with these Nitro Fists is just do not spam. I beat people consistently because they will spam all their movement trying to attack me. And once you have no more movement charges with the Nitro Fist, you're just standing there punching into thin air. A few moments later. Boys, am I glad that I did not put this tier list at the end of my update video? Because between then and now, Epic Games has re-released the Combat Assault Rifle and vaulted the Warforged Assault Rifle. So we got to mess with this tier list a tiny bit more. In terms of the Warforged, I'm actually glad it's gone because I felt it was a little too bloomy for the amount of damage it did. And the Combat AR, honestly, is a super peak weapon. The DPS on this thing is virtually equivalent, but it's got way better round collection. The recoil is mostly vertical, which is very easy for controller players to use actually. And because of how good it is, I now have to move the Enforcer and I'm actually gonna have to put it below the Harbinger SMG. Just because the whole point of this thing was that it collected its rounds very well because it fired them slowly. But if you practice with the combat AR, you're just going to be doing more damage in the end. Though overall, the meta really is just a two weapon meta. In my mind, if you're carrying a shotgun, either the Gatekeeper or the Mythic Frenzy Auto, and any spray weapon, be that the Thunderburst, the combat AR, or even the tactical AR, and you have those Nitro Fists, that's GG's. You're pretty much good to go. You can carry two heals at that point. You could carry equipments. And I personally enjoy seasons like this because you're able to use the more interesting things in the loot pool more often. It took a couple of updates, you know, a couple of nerfs to those cars. But now that the cars are nerfed, there's many more ways to counter them. I actually think that this summer is going to be pretty damn fun. And we do have the date for the summer event. And when this date happens, Epic Games will go on a month long vacation. So I'll update this tier list at that point and we'll pretty much have our meta set for the next month after that. Anyway, if this video helps you out, be sure to share it with someone you love. Comment down below what your favorite loadout is. And of course, use code Siron in the Fortnite item shop to support this channel.